You're watching our continuing coverage here on CNBC TV 18. We're in dialogue with the budget makers, the architects of budget 2021. And joining us now is the CBDT chairman, Mr. PC Modi, and Mr. Kumar, the head of the CBC. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us here on the program. Uh, Mr. Modi, let me start by asking you. I think the big thumbs up that's come in from markets, from investors, from the common citizen is that there has been no change as far as personal income tax is concerned. On the direct tax side, there has been largely stability. Uh, there must have been the temptations. Uh, everyone was expecting there would be a you know, hike in the health and education says There might have been a one-time billionaire tax. Was, was that the temptation while you were drawing up the budget? And what made you not to go that direction? Well, Shireen, uh, I think uh, in this uh, pandemic times, we uh, utilize this adversity and turned it into an opportunity mm. by toning up the tax administration and uh, by using technology in a big way so as to give better taxpayer services. Mm. So I suppose our compliance level became more voluntary and uh, more self-sustaining. Uh -huh. So I suppose uh, that gave us the confidence that we could uh, do without raising the taxes. Well, that's, I have to say, sir, that congratulations on that. Every, everyone has given you a resounding thumbs up uh, on not moving on taxes. But let me come to you, sir, uh, Mr. Kumar, as far as the excise uh, duty, especially on petroleum, is concerned. Now, you know, it's been the, the big cushion, the big saver for the government. Uh, for FI21, up from 2.67 lakh to 3.61 lakh. For FI22, at 3.35 lakh crore rupees, which is lower than the RE. Is there any room, sir, for a reduction in excise duties? beyond uh, the tinkering that's been announced today where there's been a little bit of a cut but then you've also got the agri test that's come in. Yeah. No, basically, what we have tried to do is we have tried to maintain all the tax rates so that it doesn't impact uh, the consumer. At the same time, we were re requiring to have funds for the agriculture development, uh, infrastructure de development also. So what we have done is we have just carved out a small portion of the duties that are already being, being collected. We have not allowed it to impact the, the uh, payment that is made by the consumer. Mm. So it was very essential at this stage to have a special fund for agriculture and that is what we have done. So there has been no change as far as the uh, tax is concerned. You are also aware that if you have to spend a lot in a, in a year like this, you also have to maintain your finances. If you are not going yes. to increase it, you yes. cannot decrease, decrease it either. It. You cannot decrease so, it either. So, we, so, so, so people shouldn't hope for a fact that you are likely to see a <laughs> lower revision in excise duty from here. Well, well, I wouldn't say that. But what I'm trying to just say is that we have to find resources yeah. if we have to spend. No, no, I get that. But I'm just saying that, you know, we're given to understand that there have been a lot of meetings between the oil ministry and North Block and oil ministry has been pushing for an excise duty cut. Consumers are, of course, pushing for an excise duty cut. But you're saying at this point in time, it looks difficult to be able to do that. As of today, this is what, what we have done. As of today, this is what we've done. I think that's a clear, unequivocal answer there from the CBEC chief. Uh, Mr. Modi, let me ask you about some of the changes or perhaps clarifications that have come in. As far as the equalization levy is concerned, you're saying that it's a clarification, but uh, tax experts seem to understand it to mean an expansion of uh, the items that get covered by the equalization levy. No, I think, uh, let me clarify that uh, the law was what it continues to be even till today. Only issue is that certain uh, areas were there which needed to be clarified in order to help the taxpayers understand their obligations uh, better. Hmm. And that is what we has been attempted in this budget. No, so now even marketplaces will have to pay the equalization levy? Yes. So that's, that's clear. And yes. was, that a, was, was there a grey area there which is why you were forced to make this clarification? Uh, not to our mind. But uh, uh, the taxpayers had some concerns, so it was just clarified. One more clarification which is uh, being awaited is this business of people who were stuck in India, NRIs who ended up being stuck in India on account of the COVID-related lockdown and what happens as far as their taxable income is concerned. Is there a, is there a clarificatory circular that's coming on that front? Well, uh, for the past financial year, we did uh, issue some sort of a clarification on that. And uh, I think uh, as and when the need arises, 
some similar clarifications can be so will out. the lockdown period be counted or not be counted i think that's where everyone is sort of uh, uh, waiting for clarity will the lockdown period where international flights were not allowed will that be counted Nay, for, we, for we the are still, still waiting for the complete normalcy to return okay. that's that's the time when we can take a conscious call as to what uh, can be considered okay. actually okay so still further uh, uh, wait for a clarification on that front yeah yeah okay yeah. let me then ask you sir uh, you know as far as some of the changes that have happened is, uh, on the customs uh, side uh, we've already seen many industries say you know we don't deserve to see a, a hike for instance the mobile phone uh, manufacturers have come out and expressed their concerns and reservations on that front so if you can explain to us uh, the changes made and uh, and the kind of balancing act that you've had to do therein. Yeah. Uh, there are two things. One is, this was a difficult period for us uh, once the pandemic set in. And at that time we also understood that it is necessary for our country not to be dependent on anybody else. Mm. We have to ensure that our own industry grows well. And how do we grow well? We have to ensure that primary things are start, start getting manufactured in India itself. Mm. There is no point in, in, in allowing things to come over here, parts to come here and then just assemble it to have a, a screwdriver technology. Mm -hmm. So what we have done in this budget is basically to see those, those items where we require raw materials that we have reduced the duty and where we are uh, capable of manufacturing goods ourselves. Mm -hmm. There we, are, we have seen that we have increased the uh, rate duty. As you are aware in the case of uh, automobiles uh, so, uh, and, in the, and, and in the telecom sector, so especially in this case of mobile phones and all that, we are quite doing quite well mm. over a period of time. And mm. we have taken a glide path on how the duty structure should be. And uh, we would like to ensure that India is able of, capable of manufacturing these goods here itself. Mm. So it was on that philosophy that uh, we have raised uh, uh, certain taxes. At the same time, the raw material, you would have seen that some of the ta taxes have have also been removed. Okay. We have had a revenue uh, neutral sort of a So it, it, it's largely a revenue neutral exercise? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, let me ask you about the corporate tax uh, and that reduction of 15% which was announced uh, uh, you know, with, uh, with uh, much gusto and of course was appreciated by industry as well. And then of course on account of COVID investments have been uh, you know, held up and stuck. Again the expectation is that perhaps there could be you know, a grant of uh, the sunset clause, the sun may set a little later. What's the expectation on that front? Uh, well, I think uh, nothing on that uh, front right now at the given moment. But uh, wherever uh, sunset clauses had to be extended, say for example affordable housing hmm. or the uh, interest on loan for taking affordable housing, I mean say for the startups, hmm. I mean say so wherever there we felt that there was a genuine need I mean, so those periods have uh, all, uh, the sunset period has been extended. So you don't believe that there's a genuine need over here? That's hmm. a different question. But what is the general uh, sense that you get as far as corporate tax collections are concerned? Uh, in fact, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, we were slightly concerned. And, uh, but the latest figures, they show quite a robust recovery. Hmm. So it gives us hope that uh, things are going to even out uh, at the end of the fiscal Mm -hmm. uh, one of the concerns has been on account of delays at ports, uh, you know, shipments being stuck and so on and so forth. It has impacted sectors like auto, um, uh, telecom, etc. as well. Do you believe that many of those issues now stand resolved? And since we're talking about issues being resolved, the expectation was that on the customs side there would have been a resolution scheme also that, uh, that could have been announced but uh, didn't come through? I think you would uh, agree that one of the sectors or one of the services which have done consistently well is has been that of the customs. We have been asked, tasked to ensure that the ports work right from day one, mm. where even when the country was under shutdown, my officers were there in the field and they were ensuring that all goods that, been, that, were, that were required to come in or go out continued to do so. And we, as you also know, that the basis of our, uh, our customs uh, working is to have a faceless, contactless and, yes. and a paperless environment. Mm. We have ensured that the entire uh, stream of work either on the import side and on the export side, can be done sitting in your own office. Mm. You don't have to come to mm. us at all. So that, that was the basic uh, philosophy by, by, by which we are, we are going. And uh, uh, we, are, we are sure that this in itself will be a, a, a big boost for the uh, trade industry. And it, it is not necessary for uh, the uh, duties to be uh, further 
brought down at this at this stage of time. At this stage, well, you know, speaking of uh, uh, further coordination, uh, the finance secretary was just here talking about the GST collection number, uh, which is giving the government great confidence because it's been the best number since the rollout of the GST at 1.2 lakh crore rupees, and that perhaps is also on account of better coordination between you two gentlemen. Certainly, so, certainly, certainly, <laughs> so I guess, uh, well, should we expect this to become the new normal? Uh, 1.15, 1. 1. 1.2, what, what's the expectation? I think, I think we can go further up. Further up? How much, how much further up? <laughs> that I would, I would leave it for some more time, but obviously it, uh, we have only got about, we are getting about 90 lakh uh, returns this month. We expect that to go up to around a lakh. And if that happens, then I think we should be seeing a substantial increase mm -hmm. in the revenue side also. And but, but certainly this uh, use of technology and mm. this exchange of information has helped both the departments. Mm. Apart from uh, a kind of a certainty to the taxpayer also. Huh that whatever he does is visible. <laughs> is visible and is visible to all all arms of, of government who are now talking to each other much more. Since you talked about certainty of taxes, Mr. Modi, let me ask you about the two controversial uh, tax issues, uh, Vodafone and Kane. Uh, both the arbitral awards have gone against the government. One, you're appealing in Vodafone. Kane, I would imagine you'll also appeal because there the damages are, uh, are fairly large as well. Uh, what's the plan there? And, you know, can we, can we, the hope was that maybe this budget, there could have been some further clarification on the retro issue didn't happen. I mean, that retrospectivity issue is something which was uh, a thing of the past. But uh, here in this particular two cases, I mean, so what we must appreciate is after all the sovereign right of a nation. No, 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 no one's denying the sovereign right of the nation. But the argument from the investor's perspective is this has gone through a judicial process in India and now international as well. And in both matters, the arbitral awards have gone in favor of the investors against yes. the government. So, 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 is, so why, why not put a full stop here? Yes, so, but let the law take its own course. <laughs> so will you be appealing in the Kane matter as well? That's too pre pre premature to say that. I, the I, matter is still under the consideration. The clock is running, no sir. You're, you're yeah, but the matter is still under consideration. So you, yeah. it's likely that you will be appealing? At this given moment I cannot say anything hmm. except that ke, like, yes the matter is under active consideration and let us wait for uh, the appropriate time. Okay, so the matter hmm. of the government appealing in the Kane Arbitration Award uh, is under active consideration according to the CBDT Chairman. Mr. Kumar, before I let uh, the two of you go, let me ask you, what do you foresee as being the big challenges as you move ahead? We just spoke about some of the issues that you have been able to resolve, but what do you foresee as the challenges on, on the uh, customs and the excise front going ahead? No, the, basically what we are trying to do in the, in the uh, days to come is to rationalize all our taxes, mm. see that there is no inversion. We have done a lot of work in this in the past few years. This so, 400 uh, you know, uh, items that the finance yes. minister spoke of, can you explain to us by when we should expect this review? October is when by she October said. October we will be reviewing all the notifications. There are a lot of notifications which are there for, for many number of years. Mm. We are going to put that up for with public participation. We are going to examine which are the notifications are required, which are not required. And which are not required, we are going to see that they are removed. So this is not just a rate exercise. I mean, if you can explain to us what exactly happens as far as these 400 items are concerned. So it is a, it is a matter of discussion between us and the concerned industry. Okay. If the industry says that these notifications are required to be continued hmm. for some reason or the other. Hmm. And we feel that it is, it is required that we can continue with those notifications. Hmm. But if it is felt that it has outlived its, its cause and that it is not required to be kept alone, then we need to clean them up. There is hmm. no point in keeping this in the, in the, in the, in the circuit wow. books. So this dialogue is going to go on for, for, the, for, the, for, a, for a couple of months and we hope that by, by the 1st of November we will have a very clean slate and we will have only those notifications which, we, which are beneficial to the industry. Mm. All the others we will be able to do it. Since we are talking about notifications and industry, uh, we are still awaiting clarity on the rod tap line items. By when, uh, when can we expect that clarity to emerge? Uh, shortly. It's what is shortly, committee. sir? Two days? <laughs> two weeks? <laughs> what I, is shortly? I wish I could answer that because... The committee is looking into it ah. and uh, once they give us their report then we will have it examined and definitely we will. So that, that sounds like there's, it's still a distance away then? Not, not, not very much. They, they, they are, they are under the, we are supposed to have got the report by now. I think it should be coming shortly. Okay. Uh, and on the MEIS because those dues haven't been cleared either at this point in time. No. Whatever dues are there under the MEIS scheme, we have budgeted for it and that will be paid. But that scheme comes to an end because of the 
drop debt coming in. Big, yes. So by when do you expect this? Dues to be paid out and and drop debt. This is a continuous process. We are not holding up any for any of the uh, MEIS uh, payments. But on on drop debt, do you expect by the month end that you will have clarity on the on the details? I I, I hope so. Too. I, I too uh, hope it, it should be coming at the earliest. Okay, uh, Mr. Modi, let me before I let you go and I, I, you're you're smiling at me. So let me let me ask you, sir. Uh, you know. Uh, the uh, finance minister believes that the tax projections are credible, are realistic, are very doable. In fact, mm. the expectation is that you may, in fact, end up doing better, uh, not worse. Yes. How confident do you feel about that? I am uh, more than confident of achieving not only the targets, uh, but the projections which have been given are very, very realistic. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has to be seen in the perspective of the changes which we have ushered in uh, the tax administration by this faceless assessment, faceless appeal and the entire processes and the way the returns are being processed, the refunds are being issued mm. in super uh, speed. Huh. All this should give that confidence to the taxpayer that uh, it's no longer a burden to discharge his tax obligations. Okay. And uh, that is what uh, gives us the confidence that we will be able to meet the projected figures. Final Absolutely. question on the PLI schemes because eight uh, have been announced but the fine print is still awaited. Uh, do you feel sure that by April which was the expected rollout uh, plan that uh, these will go through? That will be the yes, I mean, These are uh, by the line ministries. Hmm. Uh, once this give us the program then we, we so where, where are we? Proposals. Where are we at currently? We are, we and we are in touch with the line ministries. They have, the proposals are going. Uh, uh, where, uh, where are you? Let me, let me, let me <laughs> rephrase that. Where are you at an advanced stage? On which sector are you at an advanced stage, and you feel closer no. to notification? <laughs> we will be doing it shortly. These are things which are in. in the, we had to have an extensive consultation with them. And then we have to set for the for the. But do you feel confident that by April these, these all, will be all, notified? Yes, these are all programs of the government which are meant to be done for the sake of industry. So it will be done sooner than later. Okay, all right. Well, uh, Mr. Modi, Mr. Kumar, appreciate you joining us here on the, uh, the budget town hall. Thanks very much for your time and for taking us through uh, the backstory of some of the decisions that have made it to budget 2021. Well, uh, you heard it from the CBDT chief and the CBEC chairman. The view coming in there, they hope to do better as far as tax collections are concerned but on excise and for all of you who are waiting for fuel prices to come down their hands are tied at this point in time and uh, that's the view coming in from the government we'll take a break there's a lot more coming up don't go anywhere we're back in a moment with more budget makers